Um, let's start off from, from just by looking at an overview of what uh, you need to learn. Now, these are the topics that are always examined at, uh, at grade 12 and GCE. So, under sales, very important uh, topic, this one. You need to understand sales specialization and spell organi uh, sale organization. So by specialization, we are also going to look at things like uh, when we talk about uh, specialization, we need to know uh, animal sale or human sales, let's say animal sales. And then you also need to know plant sale. Then we also need to look at transportation in sales. We then also look at sales and the solutions, right? In this way. So sometimes, um, in fact, not sometimes, all the time, you're going to have questions that are going to come from sales all the time, uh, both paper one and paper two. Then we need to look at enzymes, very important uh, uh, topic as well. So there's what is called a lock and key hypothesis. You've heard about it? Have you? No? Okay. We need to look at effects of temperature on uh, the enzymes. So different types of enzymes, by the way. Those that are found in different parts of the body, some in the mouth, some in the, in, uh, you know, different parts, stomach, etc., etc. Then you also need, first of all, before you look at uh, effects of, uh, before you look at this one, the, you need to understand how enzymes are affected by temperature right extremely important then there is also an issue of ph that you need to know so some enzymes work well in acidic uh, conditions others work well in uh, alkaline conditions so that's that's something you need to be aware of of course then the next topic we'll deal with is to look at um, nutrition in plants Okay, and here there's the issue of photosynthesis that we need to understand. There's the importance of the same photosynthesis. And then there's um, when we talk about manure or fertilizer and that kind of thing, we need to understand how that works. Then, of course, there's nutrition in uh, humans that you must know. These, uh, at this stage, we'll be looking at... Um, different aspects of nutrition in humans. We are going to talk about uh, things like molecules, nutrients, etc., etc. Then there's also this structure right here of, uh, uh, of teeth, structure and type of teeth. We're looking at the canine, looking at the molars, looking at uh, what, what function do these different types of, um, of teeth do. Then, of course, biology, extremely important, digestion. You cannot do biology without understanding digestion. And um, under this one, there's five stages of food processing, extremely important to, to learn. Digestion itself, how food is, is both digested and absorbed into the system, and then the whole idea of assimilation. So under here, you we first look at the mouth, we look at uh, what happens in the mouth, what enzymes um, are released in the mouth, or found in the mouth, what sort of uh, food they act on. We look at the stomach itself, what happens in the stomach. Then after the stomach, uh, there's of course the intestines, small intestines, large intestines, the different processes that uh, take place in all these different parts until the time the food is ingested. Right? Digestion is an extremely important topic. Then, of course, uh, tied to that one is the gaseous exchange. Uh, here, what is examined at uh, grade 12 and GCE are the characteristics of gaseous exchanges. Right? You need to know what these are. You also need to know what, uh, uh, see what happens in, um, when it comes to gaseous exchange and what is called the, the amoeba there, the insects, the fish, etc., etc. It's, it's a bit different, even plants actually. So it's a little different from um, humans, but you know, the whole thing must be understood. Then we need to look specifically as, at gaseous exchange in humans. 
and then some diseases in the respiratory system and respiration. So you can see that uh, if you start from cells going all the way to where we are, there's a whole lot that needs to be covered. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite an interesting uh, subject, this one. But just to run you through quickly what else needs to be covered, there's transportation, there's storage, there's development. Uh, under here, we we'll look at the vascular bundles. Uh, there's also organs, there's growth. By the way, you need to know and be able to define what growth is, both in plants and uh, animals. Okay, extremely important that uh, this is done. And then um, a topic that is also quite common in uh, the exam. In fact, all of them are, uh, but you find a lot of this blood circulation in humans. Here, we are talking about the heart. We are talking about understanding the blood vessel. We are talking about blood vessels, we are talking about understanding blood itself, what is blood made of, what are the components that make up what is called blood, and then disease, immunity, and drugs. So uh, under immunity, of course, you are talking about things like red blood cells, white blood cells, you are talking about different defense systems that the body has to protect itself from sickness and disease, right? So it's quite bulk. This, what I will do, you will also receive this as, um, as some supplemental material. Uh, so you'll be able to read through on your own. So let's start from the very beginning. And now, like I said, we are going to start from the very beginning, but our focus is primarily to look at what they ask at, uh, at the grade 12 or GCE. What you must consider, what you must know. Uh, they might not ask you what biology is. You probably won't find the question, what is biology? But it's interesting and important to understand what it is. By extension, biology is the study of living organisms and the processes that occur in the living organisms, right? So, number one is a study of living organisms. By organisms, we know here we are talking about both plants and animals, right? But not just the living organisms, we also need to understand um, we also need to understand the processes my notes have disappeared. We also need to understand uh, number two the okay we also need to understand, number two, the processes, right, that occur in those living organisms. So our job is to understand what organism are we dealing with. Is it a plant or is it an animal? And then to see what processes would occur in that type of organism. So uh, just as a way of um, helping us understand uh, biology comes from a Greek word which means uh, uh, life or bio which means life and then logi this one here is a word that simply means study so if you find uh, words like psychology that means the study of the psych of the mind right if you see something like zoology you know that it's a study of something to do with zoo right if you find a word like geography uh, actually, not geography doesn't fit. Any word that ends in L O G, like this, means study. Right? Again, not that they're going to ask you what this is, but uh, it's just good to understand that biology is a study of life, it's a study of uh, living organisms, a study of what processes happen in those living organisms. And the two branches to consider in biology uh, of biology as zoology and botany. So you see this zoology has to do with what? Animals. That's right. And then uh, botany has to do with plants. Now like I said, this is, these processes here we are talking about 
these processes uh, here that we are talking about are to do with the, both animals and plants. What is most important though that you must bear in mind here is this. The following is a list of characteristics of living things. This one you have to know it. This one you have to know it. Okay? Number one, there's an issue of movement. But you can say, is there movement uh, when it comes to plants? Yes. Uh, definitely. Then there's an issue of respiration. There's an issue of what is called irritability. Or in this case, we've put it as sensitivity. Um, I'll explain in a brief second why that is. Then the issue of growth that we're talking about. Okay? Then the issue of reproduction that we're talking about. Excretion and nutrition. These are the seven characteristics of living organisms. Now, to help you understand or remember what these are, you, we, you can think of them, uh, so there's a, what is called an acronym. What is an acronym? An acronym is just a word you use to help you remember something, right? Um, or a word that represents something. For example, if we say ZESCO, right? ZESCO is an acronym for what? Zambia Electricity Supply Corporation, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, to help us remember what this is, we can think of uh, these living um, uh, characteristics as this word right here, uh, this one. Mrs. Z. Grain. Mrs. Grain. So instead of... Uh, you know, walking around trying to remember what are the seven uh, living characteristics. Uh, you can just think, oh, Mrs. Grain. So the M for Mrs. Graham, Grain is the movement. The R is what? Respiration. And uh, so instead of irritability here, we've used the word sensitivity, which means the same, which is the S. And then there's growth, there's reproduction, there's excretion, and D. Uh, Yes, you are going to find some questions here uh, in paper one and uh, maybe one or two in paper two, okay, about this first topic that we are looking at. So it's, it's extremely important to know um, what this is, okay? So it's easy for us to remember the seven characteristics as Mrs. Grain instead of thinking movement, respiration, reproduction, etc., etc., right? So this is, uh, this is it. Make sense so far? Yes. Okay. Another thing to remember about this first topic is what is called binomial system. Binomial system. So when we are looking at a system, okay, or oh, in short, so by the way, um, human uh, living things have what are called systems. Okay? They have what are called systems. We will not look at all of them, but the ones that are extremely important, we need to look at them, we need to know them, uh, and answer any question that comes uh, about. So, uh, breathing, for example, gaseous exchange is part of a system. Circulation of blood is part of a system. Movement, you see number one there. Uh, movement in humans, especially, is part of a system. Um, this is where you, there's also the, you know, the skeleton, skeletal system. Even the issue of, um, the issue of feeding, or if you like, nutrition. All those are part of systems, so we need to understand what uh, different systems uh, exist in both plants and animals, because really that's what biology is. It's a look, it's a study of life in plants and in what? In animals. Right. So binomial system is a system of naming species in which the scientific names of an organization are made up of two parts. 
This word right here, what word is this? Genus. Yes, and this one here, species names. So the genus name starts with a capital letter, whereas the species name begin with lowercase or small letters, if you like. So I'll share this document, then you should be able to, to read deeply. What I'm doing now is just to go through. Yes, so that you appreciate what is going on. So um, the other thing to know, of course, is magnification. Magnification. Uh, and then we have a little formula there. You are looking at the, the size of a drawing and the size of a specimen. Uh, these things will become more apparent when we start looking specifically at certain topics. But right, just off the, the mind, it's important to understand that there's binomial systems. It's important to know that there's something called magnification because most drawings actually, um, especially to do with cells, they are not going to be drawn according to scale. What we mean is... This, a cell is a very tiny component, very small, which can't be seen by the naked eye, and so you need to magnify. But even when you magnify that little cell, uh, they won't magnify it, they won't draw the picture according to scale. They'll just draw it, but in our minds we should understand that that's not the actual size. The size was just given to us so that we can appreciate what it is made up of. Um, let's look at cell organization, the, the rest of the other things you'll, you'll be able to read uh, on your own. So biology is quite bulky, but it, it's interesting, except it requires some effort, right, from the, from the point, of, point of view of the learner. But cell organization, here we are looking at uh, living organi organisms. Uh, and we are saying that uh, this can be organized in different levels, right? So, first of all, you have, uh, can we see, if we, okay, let's pretend this here is, a, is an animal. I know it doesn't look like one, but uh, work with me here, okay? This animal is a complex being that has many systems. Right? It's a complex being with many systems, many, 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 many systems. So to understand this complex being with many systems, we need to understand how this being is organized, okay? We have to understand that there's a level of complexity, in, in other words, it's complicated. But that complexity is just made up of different cells that do different things. So the different cells, make different uh, organs that make different systems that do different functions, right? So the basic thing to understand about, uh, you know, organisms is the cell. That is why here, if you look in this, uh, in this box we are dealing with, you see that uh, right at the very beginning there is a cell because that's what's, that's what's uh, foundation. Then, when you make a group of, put, a cell, uh, put cells in, in a certain group, they're going to form a tissue, right? Th that tissue, if you, if you group tissues, they're going to form organs. Then, if you put organs together, they're going to form systems. If you put systems together, then they are going to form the organism. So down here we've put an example. We have said there's a muscle cell. Okay? The muscle cell is going to form the muscle tissue. And some muscle tissues actually form what is the, called the heart. What does the heart do? It's involved in a system called the, the circulatory system. It's actually very central to the circulatory system. And then this circulatory system uh, is part of the human organism, right? So from a cell point of view, it's important to understand um, this structure right here that uh, we are looking at. In fact, not from a cell point of view, but from an organism 
uh, point of view. My notes have disappeared again. Okay, from a, from an um, organism point of view. So, just to show you these different cells here, and these are questions. Uh, we are yet to come to this, but you can see they will ask you what type of cell, for example, is this one, or what is the function. You have to know what type of cell, etc., etc., right? Um, so that's why we need to know we need to know the the cell system but we are not yet there uh, something else that's interesting uh, these are different uh, uh, cells plant cell animal cell etc etc we will look at some of them we're talking about uh, magnification this is uh, what we use for magnification and so on and so forth but anyway uh, we have found ourselves back at the notes. So, what's important to understand besides what we have just explained, what else would be important to understand is uh, this right here. What word is this? Organel. An, an organel, right? So, excuse me, we need to know what this is and we are linking it to cell specialization okay cell specialization and we are also linking it to function function so an organo is a cell structure specialized to carry out a specific function a specific function and here uh, by the way, you need to know what a nucleus is. You need to know what, what does it do in a cell. Why is it important in a cell? Why is it that a cell must have a nucleus? Is it all cells that have nuclear? Right? Uh, those things are important. Then, the mitochondria. What is the importance of having... Uh, why, why do cells have mitochondria? do they have a specific function what is that function right so when you talk about things do with energy talk about things do with temperature and so on can you link those things to the mitochondria all right um in this in this subject the smallest unit that will be studied is the cell of course, we'll break down the cell to look at what is in the cell, what is inside, uh, what, or what are cells made up of. Um, you also look at what is the difference, for example, uh, between a plant cell and an animal cell. What do animal cells have that plant cells don't, and vice versa, right? Those are extremely important. But at the very least, the smallest part of the living, uh, being, living structure that will be studied is the cell. It will be, it's important to understand uh, the different types of cells, right? Um, some cells, for example, make what is uh, like we saw on top there. Some cells make up what is called uh, muscle, tissue. Others have another function, like the red blood cell, and the white blood cells. Those have different functions, but they are all cells. So are you able to tell, and that's something you need to know, just by looking, are you able to tell that this is a plant cell, this is an animal cell, this is a red blood cell, this is a white blood cell? What type of cell is it? Is it a brain cell? Is it a something else, right? It would be very important to understand what that is. Then, at another level, to know what the tissue is, okay? And by extension, we are saying that a group of cells will make up what? A tissue. So a group of cells with similar function, similar structures. This is an interesting po point to look at. Similar structures, okay? Similar structures is going to make up a tissue. But they are not just grouped together and they don't just have similar structures. They are also working together to perform a shared function. 
So you need to know what a tissue is and see if you can even draw some little diagrams that show some tissues, right? Then there's a, an organ. So a structure made up of a, a group of what? Tissues. So the foundation is, uh, we saw it here, the cell. So we need to understand how does a cell make it um, function to form, a, uh, rather how does a group of cells form a, uh, a tissue and what do those tissues do, um, what function do they play to form an organ and uh, of course you need to also understand the system that each organ has. There are a lot of organs in the body. Uh, thankfully, at this stage, uh, we are not going to look at all the organs in the body, uh, just the important ones. What's the biggest organ that you know of? The biggest. In the human body. Oh, okay. What is the biggest organ in the human body? the human body. You are saying the heart? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, it is not the heart. The biggest, uh, so let's look at this for, for a second. So an organ is a group of what? Uh, rather, uh, uh, we are here. An organ is made up of a group of tissues. Okay? These tissues are working together to perform a specific function. So the heart is actually quite a big organ, but you find that the uh, lungs are bigger than the heart even. Yes. Uh, but the biggest organ that we have, and many, many of us don't realize, is the skin. The skin right here. <laughs> Interesting, eh? Yes. Yeah, so we need to also um, uh, look at the systems and then organisms. Now, I'll show you in a bit why this is extremely important because it's actually the foundation of biology. When you understand that, uh, you know, there's cells and these cells form tissues and these tissues, um, you know, form organs and these organs form what we are looking at, their systems, and then these systems form uh, organisms. Then we understand that an animal is actually a collection of different systems that do different things. And that's why the main difference between one animal from the other is actually an aspect of systems. For example, we can say that uh, a snake is an animal, right? Yes. A dog is an animal and uh, man is an animal. So, in as much as all of these animals have, have cells in them, they're made up of cells, the fact is that those cells uh, uh, form very different tissues and very different organs that at the end of the day form different systems. Right? So, in terms of movement, if you remember Mrs. Grain, right? Let's go back to Mrs. Grain. If you look at movement, for example, uh, the, the way that a snake moves is different from the way a dog moves and it's different from the way man moves. But ultimately, they all satisfy this characteristic right here of movement, but they're just different. What is the main difference? Well, the main difference is that the systems that make up those animals is different. And because it's different, they're going to do different things. Also, if you look at man, because man is, a, for now we can say man is the most advanced animal there is. Uh, if you look at the brain function, uh, if you look at the, 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 brain, the brain function of, uh, of man, okay, we are here. If you look at the brain, the way the brain in man is made is different from the way the, the snake and the way the dog, uh, the dog's brain is. Even in terms of uh, 
of uh, nutrition very different so in as much as they are both they are all animals the fact is that uh, some of those animals are different from others because of the different systems that uh, that um, make up these animals so uh, it's important to understand then in the plant world so of course you, you we understand what an organism is it's an individual made up of uh, different systems right uh, now there's five kingdoms that you must also be aware of the animal kingdom the plant kingdom uh, there's the fungi kingdom the protista kingdom and the bacteria kingdom okay so one two three four five you know about these kingdoms which kingdom do you know just the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom maybe eh? okay but these are uh, important to know and um, of course when i do share this document uh, you need to read about this you also need to read about uh, this right here so water which is a universal solvent and other properties um, that form these different function uh, different roles are cohesion and uh, adhesion and then you also need to read about uh, adaptation of a leaf to prevent excessive water loss now um let's see what else we can run through quickly okay yes there's this diagram here this table um you need to know have you seen this table before so the differences between bacteria viruses and fungi you know this okay so uh, when we talk about a virus a virus is different from bacteria and is different from fungi okay and what we've done is uh, we've put this here to help you see what we're talking about so first of all it's their composition in other words the way they are made a virus is made up of protein. A bacteria has cell wall. Fungi also has cell wall. You remember from, um, well, you, when you read, you discover that uh, animal, uh, plant cells have what is called cell wall. Bacteria also have what is called cell wall, right? But viruses are made up of protein. So HIV, that virus, HIV, uh, coronavirus as well, viruses are, are made up or covered by what are called proteins. So when they are looking for um, vaccines to work against these viruses, they always think about uh, what chemical are we going to put together that is going to destroy the composition of the protein that that virus is made up of, right? Uh, so it's important to remember. Then, number two, when we look at cell membrane, we are saying that a virus does not have uh, a cell membrane. Okay? The virus does not have uh, a cell membrane, but bacteria and fungi have uh, cell membrane. Then, the cytoplasm. By the way, when you, when you study the cell and how it is made up, you know that um, some cells have what is called uh, the cytoplasm, uh, some cells have what is called cell membrane. In fact, animal cells have cell membrane um, and uh, some plant cells do not, that kind of thing. You know about cell structure, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to study that. So, a virus has cytoplasm, bacteria does not, uh, rather, virus doesn't have uh, cytoplasm, bacteria has, and fungi has. Then there's genetic material, DNA. This is also another important uh, topic, by the way. 
genetic uh, genetics if you like yeah so you need to know what does dna stand for what does rna stand for deoxynucleic acid uh, rna what does it stand for that's important to know so we are saying that in terms of genetic makeup a virus has either dna or rna right a bacteria only has dna but a fungi has dna in the nucleus then living or not living a virus is non-living unless it is inside a host so if you take out a virus and put it outside a, a host it does it, it doesn't survive in fact we know that hiv when you take it out of the host it crystallizes in form in short it forms it dies if you like right but if you put it inside the host then it's living bacteria on the other hand is living in fact uh, uh, we 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 have read maybe um, actually read yes that human beings carry a lot of bacteria on their bodies and even different species in different living places have different bacteria but there's bacteria on the door handles bacteria on tables bacteria on toilet seats bacteria in uh, kitchens and kitchen floors and bacteria everywhere so bacteria is not like a virus that needs a host bacteria is of course when it enters the body it can cause different issues but the point is that it's living same applies to fungi okay so these differences have to be known well the difference between a virus and the bacteria and fungi and so on these are extremely important to to note uh, another important uh, issue of course we've highlighted it which is characteristics of living things except that here you are going to now read around to see you're going to read around to really see what these are you remember the mrs Z grain so when we say movement what do we mean when we say respiration what do we mean when we say sensitivity growth etc 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 what do we mean so just to look at this first example here a movement is an action by an organism or part of an organi organism causing this right here a change in position or place and that is why you initially said that eh, plants also have movement right because they are not just stationed in one place for the rest of their lives there's some movement and uh, also what's important is to understand that there are some creatures that are single-celled but they still participate in this movement arrangement and animals also move as a whole okay so some of them move at cellular structure others move as a whole thing it it, it moves depending on what system uh, it has in place to help it make that that movement then fungi and plants may make movement in parts of their bodies right so animals depending on whether they are multicellular or they are single cellular by multi i mean many uh, or whether they are singular made up of single cells the fact is that there's movement movement can be about eh, the whole being the whole animal moving or movement as in terms of plants can be internal there's something inside that is moving right so th when we say movement that's what eh, is, that's what is understood then respiration of course uh, i won't read through all of this but just to show you what is going on here respiration which is chemical reactions in cells that break down nutrient molecules and release energy for metabolism and we are saying that most organisms need oxygen for this process so what is the importance of respiration why is it that uh, or maybe not even why but can you can you show or can you see 
that there's a difference between how animals how respiration occurs in animals and how respiration occurs in plants right like what is the difference what are the processes that dictate respiration in animals and respiration in in plant cells and so on then you of course need to read about uh, sensitivity excuse me you need to define what growth is um reproduction and excretion now just a point to to caution here uh, what is important to bear in mind is that these definitions we have given are primarily what examiners look for in these uh, definitions. So you can talk about, uh, let's look at reproduction, for example, where we are saying it's a process. Now, biology, don't forget, biology is also about the language that you use. Okay? So here, this definition is saying, Biology is the, a process. You see that? It's a process that makes um, more of the same kind of an organism. But if you just say reproduction is when animals give birth, even though what you mean is the part of reproduction, but the point is that from the examiner's point of view, that's the wrong answer. The correct answer is to talk about the fact that this is a process by which organisms produce of the same kind, right? And uh, of course, you look at single-celled organisms, and you also look at multicellular structures, like uh, I mean, organisms like plants and animals. Uh, and uh, what's also important about reproduction is to understand sexually sexuality and asexuality right you need to know the differences for example how do flowers reproduce how do they produce their own kind okay uh, asexuality sexuality how do animals produce you need to know the reproductive reproductive organs okay and primarily here, the organs we are looking at are human organs, right? Those are extremely important. So you read this whole thing, uh, this just to give you ideas of what they are. Of course, if you have questions, feel free to always ask. Nutrition, um, again, this is just explaining Mrs. Grain. Why is Mrs. Grain important? Because Mrs. Grain lists the seven characteristics of what we are calling uh, organisms or living things. And these organisms or living things that we are talking about are not just big organisms or living things like plants and animals. We are also looking at uh, those little animals that are made up of single cells or those little organisms, can I use the word organisms, that are made up of, uh, that, that are part of the living uh, living organisms okay so it's important to look at that and uh, there's an issue of magnification that we looked at on top there so this instrument here you're supposed to know it the microscope you're supposed to label its parts so by definition we are saying a microscope is an instrument we use to do this right here magnify extremely small objects uh, these days they are what are called electronic electronic uh, microscopes okay electronic microscopes but the point i wanted to note is that um, you need to know the different types there's a light microscope there is an optical microscope. These are different types. Light microscopes or optical microscopes. Uh, in fact, this is the same thing, I beg your pardon. Uh, so these use light and several lenses in order to magnify a sample. Uh, in order to magnify a sample, and then the common light uh, microscope is, of course, used in laboratory, compound microscopes, and so on. 
Um, so, but the point is, you need to know from your head, you need to know how to draw this thing here, this microscope. Because sometimes they are going to say, for example, things like, uh, they will label this and say, what is but X? You've seen something like that? Or they will, they will say, what is the importance of who, but Y? They might not say what this is, what this mirror is, but they will just say, what, what is the importance of this part? So you need to know the microscope, draw it from memory, know what these are, what they do, what is the purpose of this thing, uh, what is the purpose of this thing, uh, what is the purpose of this thing, and so on. So if you wanted to magnify something, where do you put it? Do you put it here, or do you put it here? and so on. You need to know what these are. And these things are explained right here. So feel free to read, to read this, okay? Now, the question is, you also need to see, so if you are looking at magnification, uh, magnification, if you are looking at magnification, uh, which topic is this one falling under, right? Those things need to be to be known. And then here, of course, we delve deep into looking at cells. I think this is where we'll, we'll probably... So what we'll do actually, uh, what we'll do actually is, I'm going to ask that you read, of course, everything I have said, but also read this topic here, cells. You need to know these different types of cells here. Uh, let me just highlight them for you so you can see what we're talking about. You need to read, of course, everything here, just highlighting what you need to know, okay? That, 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 part of, uh, this is part of um, a genetics, that, that uh, you need to know what this part is, what this part is, uh, what is referred to when we say semi permeable um, or permeable, this, this, this. And since we are looking at cells, um, this is a, an extremely important topic, like I mentioned, because it's actually the foundation of biology. You need to uh, know what these are, right? Uh, let's do this. So you need to know what type of cell is this one. And how different is this type of cell from this one. Right? So you can see, um, you can see here that there's some parts that uh, like this and like this. Okay? And even like this although this one does have a small part, there's some parts that one cell has that other, the other cell doesn't. So you need to know these issues right here. Uh, then we can talk about them in the next class. Then there's also this, this, everything that is, uh, that is in board, you need to know about it because that's what the examiner expects you to know. That's what the examiner will be looking at seeing, okay? Uh...